We've got some fantastic content for you coming up. On Here's the News, we're talking about Hillary Clinton. You're going to love this. She had an amazing interview with legacy media and former White House spokesperson uh, Jen Psaki. Another key component of Hillary Clinton's pious conversation was the condemnation of Putin's military actions and aggression, a subject that is quite close to her heart. A supporter of the war in Iraq, Clinton racked up quite the rap sheet during her time as Secretary of State, escalating wars, green lighting coups and generally maintaining and expanding US power around the globe. In 2009, Clinton stood with Defense Secretary Robert Gates, a Republican, and called for 30,000 more troops in Afghanistan. Do you ever wonder, like, what is the real difference between America sending 30,000 troops to Afghanistan and Putin sending troops to Ukraine? I believe it's wrong that Russia invaded Ukraine. I feel that the suffering is wrong. I feel like it's a whole godless, awful affair and I wish it would end as soon as possible I wish and pray I sort of feel the same about Afghanistan though it's like, like what Afghanistan's got too many syllables in it and that G and the H and the F in the middle yeah it's different Afghanistan Afghan hounds I don't like it I don't like their clothes it's dusty there those are the mountains that they got we need 30,000 boots right on the ground the sort of same thing isn't it on most foreign policy decisions including Libya Clinton was in favour of equally aggressive action if not more so than former Bush appointee Gates Clinton and Obama got away with hawkish policies because they stuck to the language of humanitarian intervention and liberation. Clinton helped assert the right of the US government to intervene in any country of its choosing using the most brutal means possible to achieve its ends. Well that's not that humanitarian is it? Using the most brutal means possible to achieve your ends. That's sort of authoritarian and sort of dictatorial and sort of aggressive. But isn't that what Putin's meant to be? Hmm. Clinton was also an enthusiastic supporter of Obama's decision to step up the use of drone warfare in Pakistan, Yemen and Somalia. Clinton and the Obama administration sold the drone program as a precise and effective way to target terrorists with fewer risks of collateral damage. But the numbers tell a different story. In his investigative report entitled The Drone Papers, The Intercept's Jeremy Scarhill demonstrates that the drone program is far from precise and that the death of civilians is a common gamble the US willingly makes. During one five-month period of the operation, according to the documents, nearly 90% of the people killed in airstrikes were not the intended targets. Good news, go on. 10% of the people we've killed Yes. Were not innocent civilians. That doesn't sound that good. You know, you have a tough job. Jen, do you like your difficult job? I do. Then stick to complimenting my hair and stop mentioning all the people that I've killed. As Secretary of State, Clinton made it a business to make sure the world was open for US business. From securing defense contracts for Lockheed Martin to brokering deals to build nuclear power plants for Westinghouse, Clinton and her ambassador CEO traveled the globe to bring foreign governments and US companies together. We have to position ourselves to lead in a world where security is shaped in boardrooms and on trading floors, as well as on battlefields, Clinton said. According to a report by David Sirota at Truthdig, American military contractors and their affiliates who donated to the Clinton Foundation were awarded some $163 billion worth of arms deals authorized by the Clinton State Department. And governments seeking to buy arms got the same preferential treatment if they sent money the foundation's way, no matter their human rights record. How marvelous. Clinton's department authorized $151 billion in Pentagon broker deals for 16 of the countries that gave to the Clinton Foundation. So there you are. For Hillary Clinton, it seems to me, and I would love to know what you guys think, that war is a type of business, whether it's the wars of the 90s or the noughties, or perhaps even this current war. It seems that the role of the media in relation to Hillary Clinton and the interest that she represents is to present that information in a favorable way, excluding, occluding, obscuring any potential inquiry that might lead us, the people, to recognize this simple fact. Hang on a minute, haven't we got more in common with one another than we do with these sets of interests that claim to be operating on our behalf. Wouldn't it be better if we were able to democratically intervene and prevent these unconscious systems of destruction from dominating our lives and the globe? This, for me, is what defines Hillary Clinton as a politician and as a public figure. Not based on some personal or visceral dislike, just based on the information that we've just shared with you. And personally, I feel that the role of the media ought to be to interrogate, investigate, discover, inquire as to what the reality is. What are the media doing with their resources that they 
don't have time to present a more accurate account of the agenda of the Clintons, various top level politicians that are presented as heroes. I believe it is the role of the independent media to investigate these subjects, to present alternative, to bring you hope and light, the possibility that we could maybe change the world together if we were awakening together, that this can't be the best option. This cannot be it. People just sitting casually discussing about how bad Putin is, which he very well may be, without talking about their own role in literal global destruction and profiteering from death. It seems to me those are important subjects. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the chat.